For days, a new and ominous danger has menaced the vast city of New York. No man knows where he'll strike next. No one can cope with this new awesome threat. Without warning, without the slightest sound, he strikes. It's the Vulture! He stole my briefcase with a fortune in bonds! Help! read about him, but never expected to see him. I, I didn't believe it. I thought he didn't exist. It's impossible. It can't be. How can he fly? Without a sound, without any effort, he's more like a gigantic bird of prey than a human. And in the executive suite of the powerful Jameson Publications, Mr. J. Jonah Jameson is on his usual rampage. I want to devote the next entire issue of Now Magazine to the Vulture. He's big news! Everyone wants to read about him. But keep printing stories about Spider-Man also. I'll never rest till that dangerous menace is destroyed! Is this the only photo we have of the Vulture? What's the matter with you men? What am I paying you for? The public wants to see him! But Mr. Jameson, nobody can get pictures of him. He's gone before any photographer can get to him. We only have an artist drawing. No more excuses! Get me pictures of the Vulture, or I'll get some new editors! Meanwhile, in a nearby high school, Peter Parker overhears an interesting discussion as the young science major performs an experiment in the lab. Boy, I'd like to see a close-up photo of the Vulture. A photo of the Vulture would be worth a fortune. Nobody can get close enough to him to snap one. Say, that's an idea. I never thought of it before. Magazines pay big money for hard-to-get photos. And I know how to get them. Here, bookworm, take a look at what's going on in the outside world. Or can't you read anything but scientific formulas? <laughs> Very funny, Moose. At least my brain isn't muscle-bound like that fat head of yours. He'd be grinning at the other side of his mouth if he ever suspected timid Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Now, where was I? Oh yeah! I'll bet Spider-Man could get close enough to the Vulture to take some pictures that would pay off. I can use the dough. Parker! I don't expect you to ignore a delicate experiment right in the middle of while you pour through a lured picture magazine. Parker! Pay attention! Here, Peter dear. This miniature camera was your Uncle Ben's. I'm sure he'd have wanted you to have it. Thanks, Aunt May. This little gadget is going to be a great help when it comes to paying our bills. I'll figure out a way to attach the camera to my costume and then test it out. Meanwhile, in a carefully prepared hideout on the outskirts of the city. Well, well. So the Park Avenue Jewelry Exchange is moving a million dollars worth of diamonds to their new offices across town, eh? It shouldn't be hard for the Vulture to get his hands on those gems. They'll probably be expecting me to try something. 
But I'll get those gems in a way that no one would ever suspect. Even Spider-Man wouldn't have a chance of stopping me. After making certain he is not observed, the Vulture darts from his hiding place atop an abandoned silo in Staten Island, just a few seconds from the heart of Manhattan. Now for the first part of my ingenious plan. Seconds later, atop an apartment house where he had been checking his camera, Spider-Man's amazing spider senses pick up a strange sensation. Something coming through the air, but making no sound. It can't be a plane. Oh, what luck! It's the Vulture! They'll never figure out how I'm going to steal those diamonds. I've got everyone completely baffled. No one has yet discovered how I managed to fly with these artificial wings. I'll toss some messages where they'll do the most good. The first one is for the Jameson Publishing Company building. My next message is for the radio network. Nothing I like better than taunting my enemies. And finally, one for the police chief himself. I'll be gone before they have a chance to read them. The Vulture has never failed to carry out a threat yet. But we must go ahead with the transfer of the diamonds. We can't let the city think that one criminal can make us change our plans. I did it! Now that I've warned them, my triumph shall be even greater after I've seized the gem. If these photos of the Vulture come out all right, they should be worth a small fortune. That sound. There's someone on the roof behind me. I've got to move fast as only a vulture can. There. I've got everything adjusted perfectly. Now to... Hey, where'd he go? <laughs> oh. Well, well, so Spider-Man himself is on my trail. Oh, <laughs> good. It will be amusing to finally face a foe worthy of my metal. This is almost too easy. Once I drop him into the water below, he'll never bother me again. With Spider-Man out of the way, the city will be mine. Now that I have disposed of that temporary interruption, I'll carry out step two of my master plan. Meanwhile, inside the tank, the shock of hitting the cold water instantly revives the powerful Spider-Man. Huh. The vulture somehow trapped me inside this water tank. Well, I've only myself to blame for being so careless. I'll just shoot my web towards the top and... Oh no! The injector is empty! I forgot to refill it since I used it last. I've been so busy with that camera. I've got to try something else. I can't climb to the top. It's too wet and slimy, even for me to get a toehold on. But I sure shooting can't stay afloat in here much longer. Not a pleasant choice. I'll either drown or suffocate in here. Wait a minute. What's wrong with me? Why don't I use my head? I can get out of here. My muscles are stronger than any ordinary humans. There's one little trick that only the Spider-Man can perform. All I've got to do is reach to the bottom, squat down, and prepare to hurl myself upward. Like this! Oh, I did it! I may not be able to fly like the vulture, but my spider strength hasn't let me down yet. Oh, my luck's still holding out. Here's my camera. Sure is unbelievable how the vulture manages to fly so swiftly. I'd sure like to figure out how he does it. The pictures came out fine. Now whom do I sell them to? Jonah Jameson, a publisher of Now Magazine, hates Spider-Man. <laughs> I'd get a kick out of making him pay good dough for my pictures without knowing I'm the photographer. 
Originally, I designed my Spider-Man costume just to give me some color so that I could make money as an entertainer, but if I'm really going to be a secret adventurer, I've got to make some changes. First, I'll add an extra web fluid capsule so I always have enough spider webbing on hand. I'll fashion my small containers in my belt to hold additional web fluid cartridges. Then, when I get paid for my pictures, I'll buy a special miniature camera to secretly attach to the belt buckle. There. The whole contraption fits under my shirt, where it's out of sight and doesn't interfere with my movements. And now I've got a hunch I know the secret of the vulture's power of flight. I'll just work on a little device which may come in handy next time we meet. Whew! That was tougher than I expected. But it's finished now. I won't know if it'll work till I try it, but right now, I'm gonna get some shut-eye. What's that? You, you've got some exclusive photos of the Vulture that you want to sell? Well, don't waste time talking. Get over here right away. Joe, have them stop the presses. Sorry, Mr. Jameson cannot see anybody right now. He's having an important conference. These pictures are sensational! Great! But how'd a kid like you get them? Sorry, sir. I'll sell them to you on condition that you never ask me that question. Nah, okay, okay. You can have your little secret. It doesn't matter how you got them. The point is, these pictures will make the next issue of Now a sellout! I'll issue a check to you immediately! And remember, Mr. Jameson, I don't want my name used. You can merely give credit to a Now Magazine staff photographer. <laughs> oh, sure, my boy, sure. And if you get any more great pictures, remember to give me first crack at them. We're always in the market for sensational photos. In fact, if you can ever get a picture of that public menace Spider-Man, I'll <laughs> make you head brother, for talk. Wouldn't you be surprised if you knew? Come on, Peter. We're all going to watch them move the diamonds from the Park Avenue Jewelry Exchange. We're hoping to get a glimpse of the Vulture. You don't really think the Vulture would dare try anything with all the police there, do you? Aw, oh, don't be scared, Bookworm. We'll protect you. Gosh, the whole area is cordoned off. And look, TV cameras, newspapermen, police. It's like a carnival. The Vulture would be nuts to try anything with a crowd like this around. This is one time he won't make good his boast. It is hard to see how the Vulture would have a chance at the jewels under these conditions. There are police on every roof and an armed helicopter flying overhead. I'd better make myself scarce. If I have to change to Spider-Man, I won't be able to do it in the middle of this mob. <laughs> Look, gang. Little Petey is chickening out. Guess the excitement is too much for his delicate little self. Minutes later, the valuable jewelry shipment starts its crosstown convoy, accompanied by patrol cars and the police whirlybird following above. I wish the vulture would make a try for those diamonds, Chuck. We'd nab him for sure. Yeah, but he won't show. He's too smart for that. It's all clear. Start bringing the jewels out. Not a sign of the vulture. He knows he wouldn't have a chance. The sky's clear except for our own chopper up there. Looks like the whole thing was a false alarm. But stay alert anyhow. With a character like the vulture, you never know what's gonna happen next. Gentlemen, you are so right. And now I'll take those diamonds. The vulture? But how? We expected an attack from above. I'll be miles away before they can even lift that manhole cover. And they'll never know which of these twisting tunnels I'm flying through. Look, the vulture! He just flew out of the subway tunnel! This will give the fools something to talk about for years to come! How simple it was! It worked like a charm! 
now have vanished over the rooftops before the police can even begin to converge at this point. Meanwhile, learning what had occurred, Peter Parker manages to find a deserted alley, and then, moving with blinding speed, he did it. He fooled everyone, even me. And I'll find him. If I can get some new pictures of him now, I'll be able to name my own price for them. The thing I like best about being Spider-Man is scaling these sheer walls. I don't think I'll ever stop getting a charge out of it. Now, if the Vulture is anywhere in the area, my spider senses will detect him. Ah, I'm beginning to get a tingle now. Oh, what a break. There he is now. It'll be a cinch for me to follow him, using my web to swing from building to building. to see if any police helicopters are... What the? It, it's Spider-Man! He's free! And he's following me. He's too dangerous. I've got to get rid of him for good. First, I'll execute a fast loop the loop which will put me behind him. Holy smoke, where'd he go? He couldn't have flown away so fast. Wait. I feel vibrations in the air behind me. The vulture must have doubled back behind me somehow. <laughs> Forewarned by his fabulous spider senses, Spider-Man wheels about in time to avoid the full impact of the vulture's swooping dive. But one powerful wing sends the colorfully clad figure toppling from the edge of the roof. Oh, no you don't. This time I'm ready for you. What? Oh, he hit my foot with that accursed web of his. Got you. Oh, you fool! Here in the sky, you're in my domain! I'll shake you off and be rid of you for good! Talk is cheap, Birdman. This time I'm sticking. And now to test out my little gadget. Here's hoping it works. That did it! You're out of control! Uh, I've beaten you! Wh what did you do? I can't stay afloat! You'll kill us both! Speak for yourself, mister. The sky is my element as much as yours. Just watch. I can always save myself by shooting my web at a nearby building, like this. As for the vulture, he'll manage to break his fall by spiraling down. But he's gonna have a tough time ever using those wings again. Oh, here comes the police helicopter. They must have sighted us when we were battling. This is my chance to get some exclusive pics of the capture of the Vulture. Take her down, Charlie. We were right. It <coughs> is the Vulture. I can't get up. Wind knocked out of me. What'll I do? Well, if this doesn't take the cake, who ever thought we'd be able to capture the Vulture so nice and easy? What happened, fella? Did you have a tailspin? Please, no jokes. These pictures should be prize winners. And that does it. Now to get these shots to Jameson and ask for top dollar for them. Let's go, Birdman. We'll get you to headquarters and find out once and for all how you managed to fly the way you did. <laughs> if they asked me, I could have told them. The absence of noise gave me the clue. I suspected that he had discovered a way to harness magnetic power. That's why my gadget made him fall. It's an anti-magnetic inverter, and it worked. <laughs> Tell me, Parker, are you a magician? How does a teenager like you manage to get pictures that our best staff photographers would give their eye teeth for? Remember our deal, Mr. Jameson? That's my secret. Now, if you don't want the pics... Are you out of your mind? With pictures like these, I can almost stand living in the city with Spider-Man. Take a bonus and go out and buy yourself some twist records. He thinks I'm just a typical teenage kid. <laughs> Good. That's the way I like it. And this wad of bills he paid me is what I like also. Aunt May, this money means you're not gonna have to worry about anything again. Paid the rent for a full year, and tomorrow, I'm buying you the newest kitchen appliances you ever drooled over. Oh, Peter, I'm so proud of you. It's just like your Uncle Ben always said. You're the most 
wonderful boy in the world. While in a lonely cell, the Vulture has a slightly different opinion of our hero. I wouldn't be here if not for that accursed Spider-Man. <laughs> but sooner or later, I'll get free. And I'll develop a flying power that he cannot overcome. And then... Spider-Man, it will be my turn to gloat! story has to start somewhere, so let's begin ours in the science lab of Midtown High, where we find Peter Parker hard at work. Oh gosh, I thought class would never end today. I couldn't bear looking at one more test tube or Bunsen burner. Quiet, you'll break Peter's heart. He can't bear to be hearted from them. There's the boy I was telling you about, Doctor. He's Peter Parker, our top science student. Peter, Professor Cobwell has asked me to recommend a student who could come and help him with research over the weekend. And I was wondering... Gosh, a chance to work with the most famous electronics expert in town? I'd be delighted, sir. Thank you, my boy. I have some urgent experiments to perform and will appreciate your assistance. Here is my address, son. On your way over tomorrow, please stop at the radio repair shop and pick up a small radio for me. I had some new tubes put in it. Sure, I'll be glad to, Dr. Cobwell. Well, well, so Teacher's Pet is going to help the nice little doctor with some experiments this weekend, eh? While us other dumbheads waste time having dates and living it up? Knock it off, Flash. You're darn right I'd jump at the chance to work with a brilliant man like Dr. Cobwell. As for you being a dumbhead, it's nothing to be ashamed of. You were just born that way. <laughs> I'd better take my Spider-Man outfit. Never know when I'll need it. Besides, I feel almost undressed without it. Hmm, huh. here's the place the doc wanted me to pick up his radio. The Tinkerer Repair Shop. Sure is an offbeat name. Wonder what kind of kooky character runs it. I am the Tinkerer. What can I do for you, my boy? I'm here to pick up a radio for Dr. Cobwell. Oh, yes, Dr. Cobwell. Just a minute. I'll get it. Boy, I sure called it right. He looks like a character straight out of Grimm's fairy tales. Strange. My spider sense picks up odd electronic impulses. Must be coming from his testing equipment. Uh, I've got to stop getting so suspicious all the time. The Tinkerer looks about as dangerous as a secondhand cream puff. Dr. Cobwell is ready for his radio. It is one of special jobs. Good. I have just finished it. He may have it now. I have inserted our special device. He will never suspect that this is now much more than a simple radio. So far, none of our special customers suspect what we have done to their radios while we were supposed to be repairing them. Naturally, our plan must be completely secret until we are ready to strike. You mean you only charge a dime to fix radios? But... Tut tut, my boy. I like to give bargains. They bring me in lots of customers. Yes, I heard the Tinkerer's prices were ridiculously cheap. 
That's why I took my radio to him. Well, enough of that. Here's the experiment I want you to work on for me. I still don't get it. The tinkerer must be losing money on every customer. And he didn't look like a nut to me. So what's his angle? Nobody gives anything for nothing. Oh, this is baddie. I've got to forget the tinkerer and concentrate on what I'm doing. But something about him keeps sticking in my crawl. Wait. I know. Those electrical impulses which I sensed in his shop. Now I sense them here. The part of me which is Spider-Man is reacting suspiciously to them. I've got to check this out. But where can the impulses be coming from? The radio is shut off, and Dr. Cobwell doesn't have any other electronical gadgets operating now. He's putting on his coat. This is my chance. As soon as he leaves... I have to lecture at the Institute now, Peter. I'll be back in a few hours. He's gone. Now to see what this is all about. Hey, no ordinary radio had gadgets like that inside of it. There's where the impulses are coming from, even with the set off. That does it. I'm through kidding around. Now Spider-Man is going to take another look-see at the Tinkerer's shop. The place is closed for the day. Well, that won't stop me. I'm getting those same strange impulses again. They're coming from below. Wow, no innocent little repair shop ever had a basement workroom like that before. It's more like a concrete reinforced dungeon. Lucky the door's open. Guess they're not expecting visitors. You have done your work well, Mr. Tinkerer. We are almost ready to strike. Yes. Our electronic spy devices, hidden in radios belonging to important Earthlings, have enabled us to learn much about their strengths and weaknesses before we attack this unsuspecting planet. Quiet! I am processing the latest pictures relayed back to us by our pinpoint TV spy device, which you planted in the radio of a military leader. How clearly we can hear and see. My devices never fail. Silence! I must remember what they say. I summoned you, Colonel, to discuss our plans for the defense of our eastern seaboard in case of a surprise attack by any hostile force. So that's what it's all about. There are enemy aliens from another planet using some sort of eerie spy devices, which they place in our radios in order to learn our military and scientific secrets. A spy. Spider instinct warns me. Someone is behind me. <coughs> Whew, not a second too soon. Now no place to go but inside. A costumed Earth creature. Seize him. It's not going to be that easy, buddy boy. <laughs> See what I mean? Look. He can climb sheer walls. He is no ordinary Earthling. He is Spider-Man. Get him! If he escapes with the knowledge of our plans, we are lost. Ah, that inverter mechanism thrown at him loosened his grip on the ceiling. He's falling. Now we have him. Render him helpless. We can overwhelm him by sheer weight of numbers. <laughs> I've got news for you. It's been tried before. His strength is greater than we expected. He shook us all off. A weapon. We need a weapon. We have a weapon. Tinkerer is never. This will stop Spider-Man. <laughs> it would have killed any normal human, but it merely stunned him. Quickly, put him into the specimen cage before he comes to. Nothing that lives can break out of that resistor glass enclosure. Now our final problem is to find a suitable way to dispose of the meddler. He is the only mortal on Earth who even suspects our presence here. The only one who knows our master plan. There is no question about it. He must be destroyed. Release the air from the resistor glass prison. Within minutes, Spider-Man will no longer be a menace to us. Oh, I've got to move fast. 
That control panel also opens and shuts this crazy little mouse trap. The air is being forced out through these tiny holes. But instead of killing me, these little openings are gonna save me. It's a good thing my spider's web launcher is loaded and ready for action. I can't afford to miss. I've got to line it up perfectly with the hole and the proper control panel button. I've got the safety catch off, the nozzle on target, and steady. Bullseye! It worked! The cage is open! I'm free! Look! It's impossible, but he's loose! Spider-Man is loose! Who do you think you are? The town crier? <laughs> You've jarred my arm! I I've destroyed our control panel! It will take months to rebuild that control panel! We we haven't the time! Quick, let us flee while we can! Spider-Man is too powerful! Wait! Don't leave me! Don't abandon me! Hold on there, laughing boy. You're not going anywhere. They were just doing their duty to whatever planet they were from. But you, you traitor. <laughs> the smoke. The burning control panel. They put the whole place on fire. Stop struggling, Tinkerer. I'm trying to save you. No. Let me go. Take your hands off me. Ah. Nobody touches the Tinkerer. You can't see. The smoke. It's blinding me. <coughs> Choke, choking me. I've got to get away. Ugh. Ugh. Just in time. Couldn't have lasted much longer. <coughs> but... But the building is a total wreck. It'll be reduced to ashes in minutes. I hear sirens. Fire engines. Someone must have turned in the alarm. I've got to disappear. Look! It's Spider-Man! Maybe he started the fire. But why? Meanwhile, a strange spacecraft begins to streak away from Earth. Safe at last. Press the button which will destroy all our spy devices by remote control. It is done. We can never again return to Earth. They will be on guard from this day on. I've re-examined the radio, and it's perfectly normal now. No devices, no impulses, nothing. Oh, here comes Dr. Cobwell. He looks excited. My boy, I just saw the most startling sight. As I was returning from the lecture in my car, I glanced skyward, and I could have sworn I saw a spaceship of some sort fading into the atmosphere. Really? Well, what did it look like, sir? Well, it was sort of... Oh, what am I saying? I must have imagined it. Nobody would believe me anyway. I have no proof. People would think I'm a typical absent-minded professor. Hmm. Forget it, Peter. Let's get back to work. <laughs> sure, Doc. Yet I was so sure. I know how the Doc feels. If not for this mask I yanked off the tinkerer at the last minute, I might not believe it myself. But I'd better never mention this to anyone. It would be too hard to explain how Peter Parker knows so much about the Spider-Man's adventures. The burning control panel, it put the whole place on fire. Stop struggling, Tinkler. Tinkler, Tinkler. Oh boy. No, not, not the Tinkler. <laughs>